A lot of people on social media claim that saunas are good for your health. You'll hear that they detoxify you, they improve your metabolism, your sleep, they help you lose weight, they improve your blood circulation, your heart, your immune system, the list goes on. But is any of that actually true? Let's get into the science behind saunas. So we did this YouTube video on the science behind cold plunging. And we concluded that there were some risks, but also some potential benefits that are supported by science. And so you guys asked if the same could be said about the exact opposite. If cold plunges are possibly good for us, what about dry saunas? So saunas have been around for a long time. Nobody actually knows when people came up with the idea, but it's thought that the practice goes as far back as 2000 BC. And over the ages, different cultures and different people have come up with basically the same idea in various different forms. The common theme here is what's now called whole body thermotherapy, which means that your whole body gets heated up. But that can be done in a lot of different ways with different sources of heat, varying temperatures, and varying degrees of humidity. The most common type of sauna used today is the Finnish style sauna, and that's a dry sauna. The temperatures are usually between 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, and the humidity is generally low. On the other end of the spectrum, you have what are called steam rooms, where the temperatures are between 40 and 50 degrees, and the humidity runs around 100%. And there are all sorts of variations on that concept. You have the Turkish or Moroccan style hammam. In Russia, it's called a banya. And First Nations people call it a sweat lodge. More recently, as saunas have become more popular, people have started installing infrared sauna cabins in their own homes. And here, the heat is actually generated by infrared radiation when it hits your skin, as opposed to being transmitted through hot air. These saunas run low humidity and generally lower temperatures than Finnish saunas. So to understand the possible long-term benefits of regular sauna bathing, we first have to know what happens to the body when you're actually in there. So there are lots of studies that have looked at the acute physiologic effects of that short-term heat exposure. Obviously, the skin temperature goes up, and along with that, so does the core body temperature. And that starts to activate all sorts of temperature regulation pathways through the central and autonomic nervous system. It also leads to higher heart rate and cardiac output, it decreases both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, and it increases what's called heart rate variability, which is a measure associated with improved cardiovascular outcomes. At the cellular levels, our cells produce what are called heat shock proteins, which are meant to protect us from the stress of that heat. At the same time, molecular pathways are activated to reduce what's called oxidative stress and to reduce inflammation. And studies do show reductions in stress hormones, along with increased sensitivity to insulin and reduced glucose. Studies also show changes in the cells of what's called the endothelium, or the inner lining of our blood vessels. So the benefits extend from the central nervous system to the autonomic nervous system, the endocrine system, and our blood vessels. And in a lot of ways, the physiologic and cellular changes induced by that heat stress are very similar to what happens during exercise. If you think about it, exercise is a form of whole body hyperthermia. Just like a sauna, it increases your core body temperature. And repeated exposure to that heat from the sauna leads to what's called a stress adaptation response, where basically the body starts adapting to that heat stress and in a way starts training itself for that hot environment. And that's much like the training effect you might get from regular exercise. So one of the themes that emerges from the research is that a lot of the benefits of regular sauna bathing mimic the benefits of regular exercise. So what do the studies show? Well, the first thing is that I was surprised by how many studies there actually are out there. We have studies from more than 12 different countries with over 4,000 participants tackling all sorts of different health questions. Most of these studies were in men, and most used Finnish saunas, though a few used infrared saunas. And a surprising number of these studies were actually randomized trials with proper control groups. Now, these are mostly short-term studies, but we do also have longer-term observational data looking at the potential long-term effects of regular sauna use. All that to say that although the studies are mostly small and a lot of them have methodological flaws, there is a lot of useful information out there. The most interesting area is cardiovascular disease. For example, there are a number of randomized controlled trials that were done in Japan looking at people with heart failure. And in those patients, saunas improve their walk distance, they reduce their heart enlargement, they reduce their shortness of breath, and they reduce their resting heart rate. In some studies, the heart's ability to pump actually improved and abnormal heart rhythms decreased. In patients with coronary artery disease, even three weeks of regular sauna use improved blood flow to the heart on what's called a myocardial perfusion scan. And we know from other studies, including a Canadian study from 2020, that even 10 minutes in a finished sauna improves dilation of our arteries. 
And that's probably why in people with what's called peripheral artery disease or blocked arteries in the legs, regular sauna use was shown to improve blood flow to the legs, decrease leg pain, improve walking distance, and even promote the formation of what are called collaterals or these extra blood vessels that bypass the blockages. There are also a bunch of studies in people with rheumatologic disease, chronic pain, and depression. And saunas were shown to reduce headaches, chronic pain scores, anxiety and depression scores, and people's ability to return to work. They specifically improved pain and stiffness in people with rheumatoid arthritis, and they improved energy levels in people with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. If you look at the respiratory system, a study from Thailand showed that in people with chronic allergic congestion of the nasal cavity, regular sauna use over six weeks reduced that congestion, improved airflow through the nose, and actually improved lung function. Similarly, in people with COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, sauna use improved some of the airflow parameters in the lungs, it reduced blood pressure in the lungs, and it improved exercise tolerance. But what if you're a normal, healthy person? Are there any benefits for you? Well, we know from Polish studies that even two weeks of regular sauna use will improve cholesterol profile and blood pressure. But the most interesting study is from Finland. Now, they monitored people who used a sauna four to seven times a week compared to people who used it only once a week over 20 years. And people who used that sauna four to seven times a week did better in all sorts of ways. They had a two-thirds lower risk of developing dementia or Alzheimer's disease, a 60% lower chance of dying of heart disease, and a 40% lower chance of dying of any cause, which basically means that they lived longer. And what about detox? So a lot of people use saunas as a way to detox. And studies have shown that sweating will help you get rid of all sorts of things like heavy metals and pesticides and even petrochemicals that make their way into our body. But unfortunately, studies of sauna use for detoxification have not consistently shown significant reductions in blood levels of these various toxins. So there are a bunch of potential benefits, but what about the risks? People have worried over the years that saunas might affect male fertility. And there was a Finnish study that showed that regular sauna use over three months lowered sperm counts and also significantly lowered sperm motility. That being said, the effects wore off by six months later. And there have been reports of things like burns and people having heart attacks in saunas or fainting. People have gotten heat stroke or even muscle breakdown. But if you look at the actual studies, even in people with these underlying health conditions, the most common issue was just discomfort from the heat itself. In one study in heart failure patients, some patients had signs of dehydration, but other than that, there were no significant adverse events. So with reasonable and careful use, complications seem to be rare. The other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of the improvements in the psychological endpoints that have been reported with regular sauna use, like well-being or pain tolerance or just overall quality of life, might also have something to do with the benefits of the social interaction that comes with sauna use. Saunas don't just have physiologic effects, but they also have important social effects. In a place like Finland, you go to the sauna with your family. You go with your friends. You might take a first date to a sauna. People kick off their weekend at a sauna. So maybe it's no coincidence that Finnish people were rated the happiest people in the world for seven straight years. So the bottom line is that saunas, both Finnish saunas and to a lesser extent infrared saunas, have been shown to have a slew of beneficial, acute, physiologic, metabolic, neurological, and psychological benefits. If you have a cardiovascular or rheumatologic condition in particular, that might translate into improvements in your actual disease. But even if you're healthy, sauna use might reduce your risk of certain chronic diseases, and it might just prolong your life. We need more studies to confirm these findings, and we need a better understanding of how these benefits might actually occur. But until then, if you do want to try it, remember that to have any chance of gaining these benefits, you have to make sauna use part of your regular routine. For more on health and science, subscribe to the feed.